Alrighty guys, now let's go ahead and create the mother effing JavaScript file. So file new and of course we're gonna save this as tuner dot javascript right there. Okay, now again I know I did this like um probably at least three times already, but since I haven't, you know, programmed any Ajax in probably I don't know, at least a couple weeks, then let's go ahead and do this again. Alright, is my microphone working? Is this thing on? Check, one, two, better be. By the way, there were times before where I made an entire tutorial that was like eight minutes long, and uh, then I realized whenever I was editing it at the end and exporting it that I forgot to turn on my microphone, and uh, it didn't happen just once, it happened like, uh, you know, 20 different times. Embarrassing. So var HTTP, create XML. HTTP request object. All right, there we go. Things are looking great right now. Okay, so now create. Now let's go ahead and create the function that creates the object. So function. Oh, it happens to be right there. How freaking convenient. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create it in the most simple way. I know I told you guys how to, uh, you know, do this in a variety of different ways, but var xml h t t p. We're just gonna make one simple check. All right, if window dot xml h t t p. Wow, freaking keyboard request obviously that's not the keyboard's fault it's obviously my big old sausage fingers typing but hey I gotta blame it on the freaking keyboard you know what I mean bro alright so if pretty much they're doing that then let's go ahead and XML HTTP set this equal to what the object should be which is a new XML HTTP request object with empty parameters now if however they are not then we gotta give them the stupid Microsoft object so just go ahead and shave us some uh, uh, time and set this equal to new active X object and if you don't want to set it equal to active X object then you can just alert on the screen that hey you are an idiot stop using Internet Explorer and uh, that works just as effectively Microsoft XML HTTP. All right, now let me just go ahead and. All right, so create that object, the variable window. Check if they're using that. If so, new HTTP request. Looks like I spelled everything right. And if they're freaking using stupid Internet Explorer, what an idiot! Then first of all, they're retarded, and they okay. Looks good. Now all we need to do is return the object and uh, XML. HTTP. All right, so now I guess there's um two more functions before we get to the good stuff. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to create that process function. So remember in our HTML file, actually I like to set it up like this: HTML, JavaScript, XML. I don't know why. But anyways, remember in the HTML file, as soon as our web page loads, we call this function process. Well, we don't have that function created yet, so this gets called on load actually let me give me some more space to work with whoa that's plenty of space easy bucky all right function process now the first thing we want to do is we want to check for the variable and that's the only if statement that we're gonna have in here so if this variable exists then what we want to do is we want to try to catch a baseball so try and catch E. Set up the shell for that. Now, what do we want to try to do? Hopefully, this is what's going to happen. Well, with this variable, what we want to do is we want to open pretty much a uh, connection to the XML file. Now, we're just going to use git, won't complicate things. And now, what name is the file? Well, it's tuna.xml and just set the last parameter equal to true 
Now what we want to do after this is we want to go ahead and set the function that's going to be called every time we have a state change. Now if you guys forgot how to do that, you use your variable, which I guess is an object technically, on ready state change. What function do you want to call? Well, handle state change and I know that we didn't create this but we're going to in like uh, 15 seconds so the last thing that we want to do is again just housekeeping stuff XML HTTP send no now we gotta go ahead and first of all make sure we have all our semicolons now the last thing we want to do is we want to do something in case we get an error because right now if it tries to do this and we actually end up getting error no, nothing's going to show up on the screen so it's going to be very confusing for us and since I didn't program Ajax in a while then we have a very uh, you know likely scenario that we're gonna get an error so what we want to do is just put a simple alert this is probably the easiest way to handle this E which is basically your error message to string which that is a function that converts it to a string and of course it will alert it on the screen so there is a like I said a very high probability that we're gonna see that but hopefully not so basically what happens is we created the object depending on if they have Internet Explorer or not and then we call this function that's gonna pretty much be called as soon as our web page loads now what this is gonna do is it's pretty much gonna have a connection to your XML file which is this right here and you already said okay whenever a state changes and we already went over states I'm not gonna you know talk about that again then this is the function that needs to be called now in the next tutorials what I want to do is I want to show you guys an awesome way and also a new way well I don't know if it's new but it's a better way probably the best way that we can work with the XML file or the XML structure but for now thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and uh, eat some subs I don't know why I said that anything else I have to say um nope nope that's pretty much it I'll see you guys in the next video